So hello everyone, my name is Upstalda and um, I received some questions regarding my last video uh, about fragment blending and I just want to answer them shortly. Um, yeah, these are the three questions asked by Biger Dude. <coughs> and uh, number one is how would I or we make the grass more visible? I would like to use it when using the stone bump. Um, so we have to bump it for the stone set, yeah. So um, yeah, the brightness mainly depends on the text of chosen. Um, the one I've chosen was this um, this grass four stuff. Yeah, so I'll just open this up. Nature grass grass four. Yeah? And as you can see in the preview image, or I could also um, put like this. Where is it? Um, apply the selection. As you can see, in the preview image here and in the editor, this texture is already pretty dark because it's uh, full of um, yeah, of stuff. Yeah? So uh, the easiest way to make things a little bit brighter would be to choose a brighter texture, though. So um, instead of using um, the one I've chosen here, for example, use this. Or this, or this, yeah. So I guess this is pretty close to this um, general look. So if you use this diffuse map instead, um, we should get a brighter picture or a brighter grass. Yeah, so I just insert this here, and now I have to reload, and we should get an brighter looking class uh, grass stuff thingy yeah okay I said it in my earlier video my English is terrible I know it <laughs> it's been a while I said um so I have to wait yeah you can see it um the grass is yeah a bit brighter so this would be one way to simply do it um choosing a brighter texture. If you say no, I want to use the other texture, I just want it to be um, more brighter, then this is a little bit more difficult because um, the textures are blended as they are, but uh, generally you could um, also manipulate the, um, so I just revert the texture we use the other now, um, you could actually just apply um, some uh, thing of as an additional um, Brightness increasement on the on the set texture. I just have to check which one it is. It is texture one. Yeah. So um, this is this one which gets stored into the value R one. And if you say okay, it's too dark for us, we could multiply uh, the value R one with um, uh, a constant to make it brighter. Let's say uh, one time two or something like that. Yeah. So uh, we can also make this a palm uh, for the for the um, to be used in the material file. Yeah, so it's not fixed, but just um, to demonstrate how it would look like. Um, let's reload again. So we're using the former uh, grass texture again, and now we have brightened it by 20%. And now we wait. And yeah, you can see it. You know, it's it's visible. It's a bit brighter. Yeah. So just to show this off, just just take an extreme value. You shouldn't take too high values though, but um, just to demonstrate this. Yeah. It really takes. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the difference. I think it's a bit dry. Yeah. So, um, so this would be also a way to do it. Yeah. Or you could, um, uh, which would be even more easier. You could simply take the image that you want to use as a as the diffuse map here, or as the so the typical diffuse map you want to use here. And if you consider this too dark, you um, make a copy of it for your FM. And then open it up in an, uh, in an image 
image program, image manipulation program like GIMP for example or Photoshop and simply brighten the image. Yeah, so this is not a big deal. Yeah. Another thing that was asked, uh, the ambient stage, yeah, because uh, each, you can see this here, no, this is not the ambient stage. This is the ambient stage. Yeah, you can see there are two ambient stage. This uh, latter one, if global five equals two, global five is a global variable that is uh, set in the in the engine and which gets passed um, uh, to the shaders here to the materials. Uh, th this stage is not used anymore, so you don't need this. But uh, this stage, yeah, you can see global five equals one. Maybe to explain what it means. Normally you have. Uh, an, an entity in your mission, which is an, a light, which is called ambient world. Where the hell am I currently? Just have to. Ah, yeah. Yeah. This is this, for example. Yeah. So normally you play such a such a big light. You let it expand over the whole um, map. You call this light ambient world. Uh, and you apply a, an ambient text, uh, texture, light texture to it, and uh, uh, set a certain ambient value which you want, a certain color. Yeah? And uh, the ambient world is simply uh, rendered like all other lights. So there's a specific shader for it, but it's simply rendered like as a light. It interacts with the surfaces. And because this means that the light count is plus one on all the surfaces, this can uh, be a little bit performance hungry, and therefore there's a possibility to turn this off, this light. Yeah? And to uh, to ensure that the map still looks pretty similar and still has this ambient, the materials uses um, stage here, the stage here. Um, so normally global five is zero. This means just the ambient world light is used as a light normally. And if uh, you uh, turn this off, this is this. Um, I'll show you the setting. It's in the video setting. Um, advanced, yeah, ambient rendering. Yeah, simple, enhanced. Enhanced means it's done using a light shader, and simple means that the light gets turned off, but the the values are used here. So, um, and this uses a blend add, which means it simply draws the image independent from the light. The stage does not react to light in any way. Uh, it just gets drawn over the top and. Uh, normally the diffuse map, you can see this here, it's the same as in the diffuse map stage, uh, gets added and you can scale it, something not um, required, and then you have this global 2, global 3, global 4, these are the color values of the, uh, annoying, uh, of the of the ambient light, yeah, the, this light color is this actually, yeah, so it just gets added and causes the texture to appear as if it would be lighted by this ambient world light, it looks not as good, so to say, but it, um, yeah, it's similar. Yeah? And my texture does not use this currently, I didn't have it, which means that if I set the ambient rendering to simple, you should actually see nothing in the dark. Let's, let's test this. So if you are here, we see nothing, and if I go back to the menu, I uh, if I go back to the menu and set this back to enhanced, we should see a bit. It's pretty dark, but I guess you can you can see it. Yeah. So I mean, I can I can make the the ambient world light a little bit brighter, so you see the difference. Uh, I guess in the video it's not that clearly visible, so I just make this brighter. Open the map again, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, there you can see it. It's uh, uh, right, yeah? and then I disable this ambient rendering, and then you can see here. Yeah, so the uh, above texture is the default stone texture, which has this, which has this ambient stage, but this has not, which means if no light is falling on it, it's completely black. Yeah, so. And yeah, the question was, I said, how would you light this stage? And yeah, the easiest way actually, easiest way actually would be to, wait, uh, it was global, global 5. 
Uh, come on. Okay, so if global 5 equals 1, uh, yeah, we run this stage again. <laughs> this would be the easiest way, actually. Yeah? But we make that add here and uh, red was global 2, green was global 3, and blue was global 4. Eight. So, uh, and if you do this, it should look as it's supposed to look like. If I didn't do anything wrong and I screwed up the I screwed up the material file. Okay, let me just check what I've done more. Um Ah ah okay 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 uh different syntax. Very odd syntax, but okay. Now it should work. Mm, yeah. I know this is not the fastest way to answer some questions, but I wanted to demonstrate it. And yeah, now it works. Yeah. And as you can see here, it looks as it's supposed to look. And if I said uh, that the uh, oh, it's enhanced, why is it enhanced? This is simple. Ah, okay, this is not the way it should look like, <laughs> obviously, yeah, this is not the way it should look like, so I guess I've, if I should guess, I, I mixed up the color channels, yeah, let's check this, we have red, global 2, green, global 3, blue, global 4, let's see, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, no, this is correct, so, what did I do wrong? Okay, I think it's not it's not the fastest way to answer your question, but it has a good side effect because uh, this way I can show you how I uh, fix problems. So I want to understand what's going wrong here, so I uh, quoted it out, so this will not be processed, so that I only see the ambient stage, because this is actually some, I don't know what's going on, it looks like it's been white, but it shouldn't be white. It isn't white, it is just extremely bright. <laughs> what the hell is, this is odd. Bounced. Yeah, now you can only see the bump map. Uh, okay. I'm not 100% sure what is going on here. Something is going very, very wrong. Hmm. But I have no idea what is going on. So obviously it's not that easy. <laughs> yeah, but I can't tell you why it is not that easy. It should actually work. And add. Hmm. I'm not 100% sure. So I have to think about it. It looks simply like it's too bright, so maybe. Uh, I think I barely remember that some. Could be that some other textures use some tone downing too. Maybe. Uh, what could be caused by. Um, be caused by the white diffuse map, probably. Let me just check this out. So that the white diffuse map is somehow interfering with the um, with this additive blending method. Okay. Okay, this is not the case, good. 
It's a pride, simply. Yeah. So I guess uh, you can also this. I mean, it could be because there are two textures that uh, it interferes with the shader somehow, with the shader program. Let's see how this looks like. Hmm, it's strange. I, I multiply it by 0 0.5, which should make it darker and it even gets brighter, it seems. Okay, this is odd. I have no idea what's going on. Okay, so this um, ambient stage here is a little bit complicated, it seems. Yeah, it doesn't work as it should. Which is a bit odd. Let just disable this. So, I, I actually have no idea whether... Um, Anyone is using the simple blending method, I have to ask actually. But um, okay, I guess I have to think about this too. It could also be that no blend that works. I have no idea what's going on actually. So, yeah, I can't tell you. No idea. <coughs> okay, so I have to think about this. And the last question was this was a very long answer for such a short. Um, Question. And last, an last answer is a uh, prop action script. Uh, not the prop action script, the prop action highlighting, prop highlighting stuff. So uh, just to, damn it, just to um, show this. This crest stuff has also such a stage. It's, it's working similar. And if you prop highlight something, then uh, the shader palm number 11 gets set to 1, which is greater than 0. I don't know if there are also other numbers used, but normally it's one and yeah. Which means if your prop highlights uh, something, so it's in your um, prop view or however it's called, uh, then the shader, uh, uh, this palm is um, bigger than zero. And yeah, what happens here is GL destination color, GL1 is actually planned at, I think. Uh, and it adds actually a bit white to make it look brighter, and it adds a bit of the typical um, diffuse map texture. So it's it's pretty similar. I think this should be um, this should be double. So I remove this because it doesn't work anyways, and we just we see whether we can uh, actually. Use this. Yeah. Okay. And RGB 0.15 times palm 11. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I think this should work. And just close this. One can be deleted. We create a little brush here. We texture it with our blend texture. Something like this. We let the texture fit in so we see the effect. And then we simply turn this into a, a button. For example. Which is movers RTTM. Over button, that is. Okay. Now this is a button. We have to check the translate is set. Yeah, otherwise it won't work. And then we reload the engine once again. <coughs> you see, if you work with such uh, files, you have to do this pretty often. And I have forgotten the D map. Sorry. Um, I have to demap. And there's our button and it This is working. This is okay. It it looks very bright actually, but this could be this could be because I've increased the brightness of my ambient world light to a terrific value. Let's choose 
12 brightness. This is brightness here. Okay. Save and open. It's strange. It seems that the loading time is higher if, if the ambient world light is brighter. Maybe just. Okay. Yeah. And now you can see it's just prop highlights normally. And it's also looking very bright, so we could theoretically uh, reduce this one here. One third of it should be okay. So, uh, load. So this is not a problem. The problem is this um, ambient stage. Uh, I have to I have to think about what's going on there, why it's not working. I have no idea. It's still that pride. So I guess Palm 11 is not set to 1. It's that pride. Yeah. This looks very odd. Just some testing. Okay, this gets boring, I know, but I just want to test it. No difference. Okay, now I ha now I have an idea what could be wrong with the with the um, with the ambient stage actually, because it seems to me that uh, after the shader program that these RGB values, this red, green, blue stuff, which I also used um, previously, um, gets ignored. I mean, I could check what happens if I set it in front of the program stuff. Maybe that works, but it appears that, that the engine ignores this command, which is a bit odd. But this would make sense because yeah, it ignores it. Because but it, this makes sense actually, because if I remember correctly, uh, and this other thing where an ambient program is used, it's also planned at, but uh, yeah, the color gets passed. Color gets passed. Okay, so now I understand it. So this means um, I need an alternative version of of uh, my, my shader program and have to pass the arguments as is this slide values as arguments towards the shader. And yeah, I don't know. The video is running already, so I guess you can just watch me doing this. Uh, by I mean, it, this way you can see how such things are done. If you're interested, if not, you can just skip the video and drink some coffee or... Okay, let's call this plant amp. Ah, uh, fuck. Uh, yeah, blah, blah. I'm in the wrong folder. Um, GeoProx. So, yeah, new text document. Plant AMP for ambient vertex fragment program. No, with P. And misspelled. Okay, so let's open this up. We actually cap copy this stuff. And then we. Okay, those text chords, uh, I can explain this. I just. Move means that I store something there. Uh, no, one. And these text chords are. I can actually get this information in here. So the, the, these text chords are used to pass information from the vertex shader to the fragment shader. This is what I'm just doing now. And I just have to. It's the wrong. I have to check. How they are. I think it's. Yeah, program local. Okay, this is what I'm so searching for. So, um, program local zero. Program local zero is what um, this vertex palm. Was referring to, yeah, and the, the number in the bracket is the number here. So, 
Yeah, we don't need anything for scaling. We just use this as is. So I can pass the color here. And then I will I simply create another value. I don't need another value actually, but uh, so it's easier to read. Yeah, yeah. Take a value color. So the value here in the color and then I make a component wise multiplication of color. We only need X, Y, and Z of the and we multiply it with the with the text code one. Okay, something like this. And this is result color. Yeah? This okay, plant amp. So and now we get back to our uh, material and instead of using oops instead of using program plant two we use program plant amp and then we apply our vertex palm. Uh, oops which is then it's the zero vertex palm which is global two global three and global four and one we don't need the last number but it has to be four numbers and um it's actually uh no it's the it's the well, it's wrong this is palm 11 so we pass 0 0.15 times palm 11 0 0.15 times palm 11 0 0.15 times palm 11 and 1 okay now now it's correct so and if we do this and if i did not screw up anything it should work now i'm so sure that i screwed oh yeah this looks better now it looks, yeah, baby, yeah, nice, shit, nice. Okay, and if I do it this way, then the ambient method should work too. I'm so excited. I can just hide it. So it was global 5 equals 1. And here we use the global keyword. So we use, cl oops, not global. Global uh, two global three and global four something like this, which means so I will load the engine. I go into the map and then I change the uh, ambient rendering method and then we will see whether it works or not. I hope it works. Otherwise, I will have to. Um, I. Ah, typo. Cluable. What is a cluable? <sighs> it's a bit annoying that you have to reload your engine every time you change something, but well, it's the way it is. Come on. Come on. Okay, so this is. We're just looking at it. Is it? Is it um, default? Maybe we look at this direction. And now we turn this off and it looks oh yeah. It works perfectly. Perfectly, 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 perfectly. Ah, ban. Ban, ban. Ah, great. I'm. This was nice. Okay. Cool. Okay, right. So this is how it works, perfectly. So you, you might say, okay, if I turn on the ambient rendering, I'm using a shader program, and this is very wow, so to say. And we're using a shader program here too. This is also very wow, just for um, highlighting 
it actually, but um, this program isn't that. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't do much stuff. Yeah, it parses its vertex. It's this chord. I have no idea what it was, but I'm ah, it's a it's the position of the yeah, it's the position of the vertex. Okay, so I'm parsing this one and I'm parsing the value which I've read in from the shader. I'm just pausing some numbers here and then I'm reading out the texture, which has to be done anyways. It's also the way uh, it is done here. Yeah, map, blah, blah, blah. It's reading this texture. And then we do some very simple calculations. We do a linear interpolation. I've shown this in the last video what this means. Uh, two multiplication, one addition per um, element. And then we multiply it with a value per element. So it's okay, I think. It's not that performance intensive. Me thinks. So, um, yeah, so it works. Okay, so I think I've answered all questions, which only took me 30 minutes again. I, I have such a 30 minute wipe. I don't know why. I, I always takes me, it always takes me 30 minutes to do such a, such a, oh god. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, um, but I, um, yeah, so more visible was clear. So I said, um, just to sum it up. Maybe. First, our question was how to make the graphs more visible. I said um, you can either, all, either alter the, the shader program, or you can use a brighter texture, or you can just use the, the image used in the texture used as a as a source, so to say, and uh, brighten it up in an image manipulation program, like I said, GIMP, Photoshop. Maybe even paint or something like this. I have no idea. Yeah. So uh, this isn't a big deal. Um, and how to apply the ambient stage and how to make the FOB highlight work. Yeah, I just shown. Yeah. Um, you you, new, new, oh, you use this new program, Plant Amp, for both things. And yeah, it, it looks almost the same actually. Yeah. You have this additional vertex palm. Uh, for the ambient method, you um, pass the light values, the light, color values of the light, of the ambient world light, global two, uh, three, and four. And for the frop highlighting, you pass the 0 0.15 times palm 11, which is the coloring factor, which is uh, which is used. Wait a second, which is used here too, and. Yeah, it's, it uses this white stuff, so you could actually, mine was a bit dark, you could actually add this too. Yeah? So, because this is just white, uh, it has to go here. Yeah? So, this is this is used to make it a little bit more brighten, brighter, and to look, let it look a little bit more washed out, I think. So, it's because it looked a bit washed out in the original games, I think this is the reason why they um mimic this yeah. and uh, now it's a bit brighter yeah. and it's actually a said GL the destination color and GL one this this basically means it it takes the um yeah I think it's it's plant add really it just adds it on top one second please I I really think it's blend add. Yeah. Test color. No, chill one, chill one is blend add. Filter zero one. Okay, I'm not a hundred percent sure. But it's it looks pretty similar actually. So I'm not that familiar with the Blending methods. There, there are dozens of ways to to combine the source and um, um, yeah. Okay, it takes the color currently on the screen and I don't really see a difference. So I guess if I use plant add here, it will it will look the same. Probably a little bit more brighter, but. It should look the same. Most most planting modes do not differ that strongly. So 
the main difference is is plant filter and plant add and and if you use those alpha plant modes which is uh, you have to sometimes in you know this gl destination alpha one minus source alpha stuff which is used on transparent textures um, like glass to add fake reflections okay it is ah no Okay, it, it seems to work similar like this filter stuff. Filter stuff darkens things down and it's just, but it seems to work like a, it's not additive, it's also something that works uh, over a multiplication. A blend filter actually means that the uh, colors you will specify here gets multiplied with what is on the screen already. Yeah. And as those values range from 0 to 1, where 1 would be completely white, um, it means it always gets darker. And this seems to be multiplicative too, but it brightens things instead of darkening them. So... Uh, I have no idea. But it's, it goes in that direction. You see, this is pretty nice stuff to experiment with. The, the, the documentation on this stuff is a bit, little bit... Um, this is ID DevNet, by the way. Um, the documentation of this stuff is a bit hard to understand sometimes. Yeah. So, you have to ask. Uh, no, not to ask, to guess a lot. <laughs> to understand what's going on and you have to uh, experiment a lot with the stuff to understand how it works and how it's going on and normally you only get a rough idea but as you can see a rough idea is more than enough to make funny things happen so okay i think i think i should really stop this video here it's getting too long so yeah if you have another uh, any more questions um you can ask as said and you could also tell me uh, uh, whether you think it's a nice idea to answer questions in a video or if you prefer it if I investigate this stuff on my own and simply post the answers because I think sometimes because many people say okay I have no idea how to use this and how to make this and it's also complicated it may be a little bit interesting for one or the other who might want to um, uh, still recording yeah who might want to dig into the stuff to see how I do it Probably. So you can tell me what you think about it, and uh, or should I make a script before I record something? Should I write everything down and then make it very, very professional to make it look like and appear it look like? So the reason why I do not make scripts, maybe I can tell, is, is that uh, it would be overwhelmingly perfect. I would do everything correct, probably. This would be the aim, and it would look like I'm working pretty straightforward. I have this problem, I need to solve it, and I have the idea, and I do exactly know what I'm doing. And this is actually not the case. I'm, as you could see, now I'm experimenting a lot and trying things. And yeah, uh, sometimes it turns out to work, and sometimes it turns out to work not. And I only post the stuff that works, so people think Man, this guy really knows what he does, but I don't know what I'm doing here. It's just complete rubbish. But sometimes it works good. So, yeah, I think this is this is more motivating for people who are watching this to to try to learn that themselves. That if they see that people that can do some things don't do it overwhelmingly perfect, but um, are also stumbling around sometimes to get things to work. Yeah. So that's my opinion. But if you say no, you want to have it very professional. Don't talk that long without saying anything. Then it's also okay. You can you can make some feedback on this. I think it would be interesting for me, actually. And yeah, I'm just scrolling up and down. And I I will quit this now. Yeah, I think I've talked a lot, long enough. That's what I'm going to say. So okay, we are around 40 minutes. Uh, so this means the next video will be 50 minutes. And yeah, that's it. Okay, my name is Obstorter. Thank you for watching. I hope. It was somehow informative and yeah, bye.